It's been a while since we spoke about the upcoming game called Tannenberg. This will be the second entry into the World War I series of games, developed by the same team behind Verdun. Now, Tannenberg focuses on the eastern front of World War I and will push forward some new features that the developers have been working on and improvements over Verdun that will change the experience overall. If you missed my video on Tannenberg a couple of months back, our sort of first look at the game, then I highly recommend you go and watch that. It's linked down in the description. It'll give you a general overview of what this game's about. So what's been happening with Tannenberg recently? Well, first up, the team have revealed some new artwork for the upcoming armies that will make it into the standalone expansion. Now, we've got some shots here of the German Empire and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, both members of the Central Powers who did most of the fighting against the Russians on the Eastern Front. Let's start with the Austro-Hungarians because, well, I think they look a bit cooler here. The developers have created two different outfits for the army, going with an early war pike grey uniform and a late war field grey uniform. Now, as you can see, they are quite different in their appearance, and my feeling is that depending on which map you're playing on, and therefore which stage of the war you're fighting in, you'll play as soldiers in their differing uniforms. This is nice to see, and it's something that I think a lot of fans will appreciate, as it adds a touch more authenticity to the scenario. Now, the developers have always tried to feed that into their games with their realistic bullet damage, taking people down in a small amount of shots, and having these different uniforms for the different battles will add a bit more authenticity. The German Empire is, of course, being represented in Tannenberg as well, with much of the fighting in World War I between them and the Russians taking place in Northern Europe. We've got some shots here of the soldier models that you'll see in-game, but interestingly, there's some information given in the same blog post about their weaponry. Now, the team appear to be giving the 1914 soldier a Gewehr 88 instead of the more well-known Gewehr 98. This represents the situation in many armies of the war not having enough units to supply all of their soldiers with the most up-to-date equipment. Many of them had to use older versions. The German soldier featured here is also wearing the early war Pickelhaub helmet, which was much less effective, but a highly iconic piece of headgear. Now, the Austro-Hungarian soldiers, they're wearing a modified version of the late war German M15 helmet, or the Stahlhelm, as it was called. They changed the colour, the chin strap, and the placement of the rivets in the German design, and they issued them to their soldiers as the M1917 helmet. The developers haven't confirmed if the standard German Stahlhelm will be in the game, but I imagine it will be considering the Austro-Hungarians have two different uniform setups, so I imagine the Germans will have two setups as well. Nothing confirmed, but that would make sense to me. On to some weapons now, the Steyr Mannlicher M96 rifle and the Mosin Nagan M91 carbine have both been shown off by the developers as weapons coming to this game, respectively for the Austro-Hungarian troops and the Russian army. The carbine Mosin was developed as an aiding weapon for machine gun crews, and it could be easily transported in comparison to the long rifle version. But they chambered the same calibre of bullets, so ammunition could be shared between the long rifle and the carbine. I would be surprised if the original M91 Mosin wasn't in the game as well, but maybe the developers will see it enough to just have the carbine. I guess we'll have to wait and see here. We can also see the Steyr M1912 in this shot. This is an Austro-Hungarian pistol, and thus being held by an Austro-Hungarian soldier. Some of you guys might recognise this one from Battlefield 1, where it's got a rather funky reload animation. In the last few blog updates, the developers have showcased three maps so far. I believe one is called East Prussia, one called Galicia, and the third one called Poland. We'll start off with the East Prussia map, and this has been designed with the brand new 32 vs 32 player game mode in mind. And the setting is inspired by an area in northern Poland, so don't confuse it with the actual map called Poland. Now, there's a huge amount of forest on this map mixed with open fields, meadows, lakes, farms and dirt tracks, so really, it's like open countryside before you go diving into that action. 
Parts of the map are guarded with central power trench lines and defences and certain areas have been bombarded by artillery. So there's some evidence of war there but mostly you're going to be going into open countryside for some extremely long range combat. The second map, called Galicia, is set in areas of southern Poland and northern Ukraine by today's records, sitting to the northeast of the Carpathian Mountains. Now, the map will feature a lot of cultivated land, wild forests, you've got sloping hills, and sheer rock faces. The interesting point, a railway track with a stranded Austro-Hungarian armoured train sits towards the northeast corner of the map, and the Russian forces in the southwest of the map have to traverse all the way down the hill towards this mess trying to take out the enemy. The train is stationary, and it can't be used, but it will add a certain amount of action to the map, as it will likely be a focal point, and it will provide a little bit of cover as well. The last map, officially called Poland, even though all three of them appear to be set in Poland anyway, is a harsh and gritty map with a fairly open landscape that's been scorched by artillery and is littered with destroyed villages. It's a central Polish plain quite close to Warsaw. This is another of the new maps that's designed to accommodate 64 players and comes with many different combat locations. You've got building to building fighting, entrenched fortified wooden buildings, you've got some open warfare in the flat fields, you need to use the hedgerows and the bushes as cover, and you'll have some long range action over the ploughed fields that are only separated by wooden fencing. So that's really going to be a rifle area. And lastly, let's quickly talk about a mechanic that's been developed by the team that wasn't in Verdun that will be in Tannenberg, bullet penetration. This doesn't sound like a huge deal for anyone that's played sort of modern first person shooters where bullets go through soft cover, but you have to remember that Verdun was an indie game with a very small studio making it, so the fact that it's in Tannenberg is great news. And an update like this will change the gameplay more than you think, because a solid object, or what was a solid object, in the previous game Verdun, say a wooden fence, that's not so solid anymore. Soft objects like wood, dirt, or even flesh are now penetrable, and the bullets you fire will go through that and beyond. This means the soft cover that you once relied on to protect you is now basically just visual cover, as opposed to solid cover overall. If you stand behind a concrete block, then you're still going to get protected from the bullets. But anything that you would think a bullet should go through, in Tannenberg, the bullet will now go through. Tannenberg is shaping up to be an awesome game, and it's covering the Eastern Front in a closely authentic way. Another World War I shooter, Battlefield 1, is about to release its major update, adding the Russian Army and the Eastern Front as well. So you're going to have two games covering the same war about the same time, but from a totally different gameplay perspective. Battlefield 1 offers players a more creatively licensed look at World War 1, with prototype weapons, heavy use of vehicles, and fast-paced infantry action, whereas Tannenberg will offer a more authentic experience where the weapons you use are very powerful, and gameplay takes place across large areas of land. Now, if you like the look of Tannenberg, and it's a game that you're going to be interested in, and maybe a game that you pick up when it's released, but you want to get involved a little bit earlier, you can sign up for the alpha testing of the game right now. Beware though, you will need 20 hours of playtime in Verdun before you can send off the application, and it doesn't guarantee you access to playing the alpha versions either, but the link is in the description if you want to sign yourself up, and you're serious about wanting to help the developers make this game better and test out the new features. But there you go, that's your update on Tannenberg, what's been going on, new things that have been developed and new features coming out. As I said, I'm really excited about this game because it's going to give me another look at the Eastern Front of World War I from a totally different perspective. But thank you very much for watching, let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section. Is this a game you're excited about as well, or is Battlefield 1 more your flavour and you're looking at the Russian DLC over there? I'm looking forward to this game and I would love to get some testing done in the alpha as well. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.